We are very excited to have Wendy Covey join us for another episode of EcoSY. She is an industry hero with a passion for marketing that is unmatched, and you're going to hear that come through as she tells her story today. Speaking of stories, we're still collecting those industry war stories. We're looking for the good, the tough, and the inspiring. Submissions can be sent as a DM on Instagram or Facebook, and check out the link in the show notes. If you have any questions about the war story submission, don't hesitate to reach out to us on our social media accounts. Now, it's time to get some insight into the life of an expert in marketing for engineering companies. Cue the music. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation and we're very glad to have with us Wendy Covey, who is the CEO and founder at True Marketing. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Happy to be here. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day in Austin, Texas. It's a beautiful day in North Carolina, too. So I'm excited to, to do this and meet with you. And, uh, you know, it just we love to get these conversations started, Wendy, just by hearing about your personal journey. All right. Where should we start? <laughs> Wherever you want to go. I mean, it's, it's, you just, you let us, you, you drive this ship. Okay. Well, uh, I guess we'll talk about my professional career. Okay. Uh, I'm a native Texan, grew up here in various parts of the state. And uh, my dad is a, was a professor at Texas A&M okay. and he was an Aggie himself. And so I felt it was going to betray the family if I didn't attend his alma mater. So I'm a proud Aggie. All right. <laughs> That's maybe good or bad, depending on your listener. <laughs> um, but when I graduated college, it was at a difficult time in the job market. I was a journalism major. It was uh, in the mid nineties and it, it was just a, a tough market. And, you know, I, I was looking around for jobs and there was this company and it was, it was kind of, kind of cool logo. And I didn't know what they did, but I knew that my commute would be literally two minutes that they hired me. Okay. And I found this ad in the newspaper. I will age myself now. And it was an ad for an events coordinator. And I happened to do a lot of event stuff in college. I was a sorority rush chair and I did a big trade show for student organizations. And I thought, wow, wait, someone's going to pay me to plan events. This is like too good to be true. Like, right. Excellent. <laughs> so that company was National Instruments, now known as NI. And sure enough, I, I show up to work and and yeah, I, you know, was hired to plan events, but it wasn't quite the events I thought they were going to be. Uh, my first year, I planned 60 North American trade shows. Wow. Six, zero. <laughs> and then I was responsible for um, a, a user's event called NI Week. And there were 500 attendees that year. And my manager said, well, as you can tell, I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm about to be out on maternity leave. So it's your event. Don't worry. You got this. Like going to be great. <laughs> so that's what I was faced with my first year in, uh, at, at NI. <laughs> okay. And then that led you to, you know, how did you get to true marketing? Yeah. So, um, so 12 years later and, uh, a few other positions under my belt, uh, I had reached a stage where I was ready for a new challenge. Um, I personally, uh, moved out to the country, um, outside of Austin. So my commute went from being two minutes to an hour and a half. And, um, there was a colleague of mine named Rebecca Geyer and she and I were very close and we would go for runs and happy hours. And we had a lot of deep conversations about our careers and, and we both worked with system integration companies that were partners to national instruments. And we saw how much they struggled with their marketing because they couldn't necessarily afford a full-time marketing strategist and a team of marketing doers. And their websites, quite frankly, were atrocious. And we thought, Man, we can help them. You know, we, we know all the different aspects of, of marketing. We know this target audience. And, um, and we want to help them and, and help others too. And so we decided to take that brave leap and uh, leave our cushy, you know, corporate desk jobs and start the agency. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, and that, that, how long ago was that? Uh, it's 13 years. Oh, okay. And you got, and you're based there in Texas. 
based here in Texas. Yes, we're a hundred percent virtual um, company always have been. So when COVID hit, that was another, like another day at work <laughs> way. So that was nice. Um, and along the way, you know, our agency has evolved, you know, we didn't always just work with companies in engineering. However, um, we founded the company in 2008 and you may recall in 2009 was the great recession. Mm -hmm. And so that hit us early on. And, and that's when we knew that, um, we don't want a diverse client base. We want to really focus in on um, helping engineering and highly technical companies market to their discerning audiences. And um, that's always just been a passion of ours, something we know really well. We've hired the right people that also are strong in this area. And I think it's really set us apart and helped us to um, serve our customers in a very unique way, in a way that's just solidly informed by this experience. Yeah, I love it. I love I just love your your passion and your mission and what you guys are doing there. That's amazing. You know, and some of the, the people that you're serving, those engineers, where where do you, some of their challenges? What are you hearing from them? Yeah. Well, you know, one of the challenges right now today is this change in the sales methodology. You know, um, sales engineers can't get on a plane. They can't uh, press flesh with their customers. And this was a, a very popular style of, of sales in our industry and still is. And then you compound that with the inability to go to in-person trade shows. And so it's really taken companies um, for a loop, especially those who hadn't leaned into digital marketing that have bad websites that haven't focused on content are really scrambling. But particularly on the sales side, having to learn how to have sales conversations in Zoom, how to learn how to master social selling, these are real struggles. And I see companies do really well at these and some that are just still floundering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because that, that whole uh, experience, as you mentioned, is, is it's got turned upside down for sure. Yeah. Well, hats off to you for trying to help people bridge that gap. And how about the, the, the young listener that may be listening that wants to enter a field like you, you know, marketing, serving industry, what advice would you give them? Oh, gosh, great question. So um, I've seen right now, so my kids are kind of at that age, too. They're, they're in their, uh, you know, late teens, early 20s, and, and they, too, are, are setting out in their first jobs. And so my advice to them is, you know, pair yourself with someone more experienced and learn by doing and um, don't, don't be in a position where you're isolated when you're a young marketer. So one of the worst positions, I think, for instance, would be to be a solo marketer at a technical company when you're straight out of college, because you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> you, need, you need some mentorship. Uh, so that's one. And then two is we look for every single hire to have strong writing skills, because we know that if they do, we can have them not only be in charge of maybe an email marketing campaign or social media, but we can also have them write the content around those things and we can plug them in in more, more places. Yeah. Um, so that's a really important skill to have as well. So, I mean, how about that writing? Where, where would they pick that up? Where, how do they get better if they want to be a better writer? Any, any tips? Cause I'm sure you're, you're a, f a fabulous writer as we, we know from your book. Uh, thank you. Well, start a blog, um, offer to write things. Uh, you know, uh, for instance, uh, my podcast producer, uh, my podcast is also my son and, uh, he picked up the skills to, to do audio production and, and and taught himself and that's great but i've told him okay for you to grow in your career now you need to be comfortable communicating as well so uh how can you how about you write a blog about what it takes to produce a, a podcast or how about you get in front of the camera and teach people and start to get comfortable and find your own voice and that'll help um, him and other young listeners gain confidence, grow in their communication skills. And then imagine how easy that next job interview is when you have these examples of work and you're used to communicating. Oh, yeah. Those reps and those at-bats, they're so important. They really are. And you also mentioned from an advice standpoint, mentors and, and, and trying to find somebody to help you. When you look back across your career, does anybody stand out as a mentor that's helped you uh, grow along your way? 
Absolutely. So my first uh, manager at NI was a woman named Heidi Boschnagel, and she always had a very positive attitude. And she was someone who would um, coach for success and give you as much as responsibility as you wanted to take on. And as a young go-getter, I, I just... I really thrived within that because I could go to her for advice, but she would step back and let me give me the space to fail forward. If I needed to give me a a safe space to try things out. And um, it was just a very motivating person. And then on the personal side, she had a wonderful way of balancing family and work that I learned before I started my family. And so it helped me create good boundaries, healthy boundaries around work-life balance that I've taken with me into true marketing and made sure that I provide a workplace that that gives this to my employees. No doubt. It sounds like she was a wonderful mentor. And those boundaries are so important, you know, and particularly now with COVID and so many people working from home, if you don't have those boundaries established, it can be very difficult. Absolutely. Very cool. Now, how about marketing? Well, some people think marketing, they have this perception in their brain, and it's not always good. So if you if you could, could knock out it or debunk something here, what would it yeah. be around, around marketing? Yeah, I'll get these calls from people that, that want to hire true marketing, and the conversation will go something like this. Hey, I, I don't want to do all that stuff. I just want you to produce a list of names for my salespeople to call. And... <laughs> And it doesn't work like that, right? right there right. isn't a silver bullet. Marketing is more complex than that. And just, just as there's not any one metric to tell you if your marketing's being successful, there's a host of metrics. You can't boil it down to any just one thing. So I, I, I was talking in the forward of my book, um, you'll see a gentleman named J.D. Sherman, and he was the former COO of HubSpot. And, but he used to be a CFO in a, at a semiconductor company. So he comes from our space and he thinks like an engineer. And he said it best, he goes, Wendy, think of marketing and content marketing specifically like a manufacturing plant. Mm-hmm. Okay, when you start to build that manufacturing plant, it isn't pr- productive in day one, right? You're not making money. You have to lay the foundation, you have to buy the equipment. And even when you start creating your widgets from that factory, those widgets are going to increase in value over time. You're going to get efficiencies over time. So it's an annuity. And you know, it's great for manufacturing because they can amortize this annuity and you can't do that with marketing, unfortunately, but it really is a long game, but you will get to the point where you are creating so much value that your sales force no longer has to prospect. And you're using salespeople to field inbound leads that are already warmed up for them. And they're utilizing their time in the best way possible. And you're utilizing marketing the best way possible. That's it. That's wonderful. I love that answer. Now, I, I, I hear your passion behind everything you're talking about here. When are you the happiest? You know, what brings you the most fulfillment? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. Well, I, I'd have to answer it two ways. I, I enjoy people. I enjoy interacting. I'm a big extrovert. You might be able to tell. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I get energy from, from storytelling, from hearing people's stories and their journey and sharing mine and finding uh, ways in which our lives intersect. So that absolutely gives me so much joy. And then the other thing that does is being in the outdoors. I love to fish. I love to hike. I love to just commune with nature, if you will. And that's um, really important to me. No doubt. Now, if you look back across your career, does anything stand out as a highlight? Like, just like, I did this, I was part of this team, or whatever it may be that you'd like to share? Yeah. Starting True Marketing is absolutely the biggest highlight. It changed my life. It changed the lives of many others. And I feel like we're making a, a real difference in helping people in their journey. And um, that brings me so much joy and fulfillment. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Now we're going to get off the, the career. We're going to talk about uh, hobbies and things you enjoy doing. I got your book here. And if I remember, for our, for our, our viewers that may be able to see this, there's a picture there of Wendy. And I'm not sure how big that fish is, but it's almost bigger than you. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a hobby's fishing, like you mentioned. Yes, it is. <laughs> 
It is. You can see I have a fish behind me. This isn't the fish. Okay, the, that's not the, the fish. fish. That's a little tiny trout that um, <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> no, I, I lucked into a five foot long uh, redfish off of the coast of uh, Corpus Christi, Texas. Ooh. And uh, it's been a state record for nine years now. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So a state record for nine years. Now, what, what else? You, anything outdoors you said you love to do? I do. I do. So um, I enjoy, we have, we owned a, a game ranch with exotic animals and love to go out there and hunt for sheds and just walk around, look at the animals, interact. You never know what you'll find. You know, there'll be a, a fox pop out of the bushes one time or, or heaven forbid a skunk comes across your path. Um, I recently came across a, an indigo snake. Are you familiar with indigos? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was an 18 foot indigo that had swallowed about a seven, six or seven foot rattlesnake and choked on it. And oh I came gracious. onto the scene, fortunately, when both snakes had, had found their maker, but Wow, that's not something you see every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I, that's when uh, Mr. Chris would start walking on water, running away from all that. Yeah. So I, I don't do yeah. snakes. Yeah, yeah. So I just just love getting out there, and every day's a little bit different. That's awesome. Around. That is so awesome. Now, how about your family? What would you like to share with us about your family? Yeah. So uh, my husband, Randy, was in technology sales for 30 years. So if those of you who've been around and remember the word Compaq <laughs> as a company, yeah. he was at Compaq before it was HP and he's been at VMware. So a uh, lifelong IT salesperson. And um, this past year with uh, before COVID, but, but around that time, his company was purchased and he decided to make a pretty big career change. And now he's gone into uh, ranch sales. So Oh. land sales in Texas. And that's been an exciting journey for us because I'm, I'm so proud of him for following his passion for the outdoors too. And, you know, taking that, that sales experience and applying it towards something new. So uh, that's great. And then I have my 20 year old son, who's my podcast producer and uh, a 17 year old daughter that graduated high school a little bit early because what high schooler wants to go to virtual class every day right now. Right. Right. And uh, she'll be off to Colorado State University in the fall to become a psychologist. Oh, OK. Colorado State. Couldn't keep her in Texas, huh? I tried so <laughs> hard, but I don't know if you knew this fact. I just recently figured it out myself, but CSU used to be Aggies. So oh. she, she's going to the Aggie yeah. school, yeah. Of, you know, up north. <laughs> <laughs> Still got that Aggie tie. I love it. That's love it. right. That's right. So but right now, it sounds like everybody's local, right? Still in Texas for the moment yes okay. i have all my babies nearby and they come over for food once a week we have a family dinner and they always request their favorites which is usually chili and nice. uh then it's a chili and we sit around and tell stories and maybe pitch some washers that's awesome that's awesome now how about things you enjoy consuming on your own for, from a podcast or youtube books you know things like that what, what do you yeah. enjoy well, I'm a big reader, but I'm I'm also big into listening to podcasts. And recently, I've discovered um, all the different. I, I've I've heard a Wondery show here and there, uh -huh. but I've really gone deep in all the different offerings that Wondery has. So um, I enjoy listening to podcasts for entertainment when I'm you know working out and you know mowing the yard or whatever right. it is. Um, so I'd suggest checking that out. And then I probably read two fiction books a week. So, uh, Oh, wow. I'm a, I'm a fast reader. <laughs> you are a fast reader. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. This has been so much fun getting to know you, Wendy, and we call it eco ask why we always wrap up with the why where we're talking about the, the, the passions that people have. So what is your personal why? I love helping motivate people and connecting with other people. And I think that drives me in my relationships uh, and both at work and at home. That's awesome. Well, for our listeners out there, I'm sure you've been blessed just like I have to get to know Wendy. And you'll, you'll find in the show notes all the resources to get connected with her directly. And uh, Wendy, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. You bet. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor 
by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.